So uh, where are the beginnings of the inklings of a call? The inklings of the call, I think, came when I was a child. Um, my grandparents were big in the Baptist church in Missouri. Mm -hmm. And so I was drugged to everything on Sunday and Wednesday and Thursday and didn't know normal people, didn't go to church every day. And um, was always asked to be up front to say a speech. I did my first solo when I was five. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. Uh, <laughs> little ashy legs and everything and little petticoats. And um, just was from the beginning of my life uh, given this deep foundation of faith. Mm -hmm. And whenever God asks you to do something, you do it, regardless of what anybody else says. And so I did all the speeches, the Easter speeches, all these other kinds of things. And then I was a soloist in a choir. And my mother said that whenever I began to sing, before I sang, I would say something. And so they didn't call it preaching because women weren't supposed to preach when I was in Missouri. And uh, from that, uh, always became, received support from my family on whatever I was doing. And so when my mother was 51, she had the beginnings of what was Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to go with my then uh, two month old daughter to Kansas City to uh, have her uh, admitted to a facility. And my grandmother went with me. And while I was on the plane, I was having this conversation in my head with God about you know everything that was going on. And uh, in this conversation at some point, I mean, it wasn't a deep voice or anything like that. Um, it was, I need you to do more. And I thought, well, what more? I'm Sunday school teacher, I'm choir director, I, you know, I slept coffee, I do everything. What more can I possibly do? And God said, I need you to do more. And I was thinking, well, what more? And then, then in, our, in my head, it was, I need you to teach, preach, and write. So I was immediately just kind of taken back because I thought, no, men preach, because that's what I was taught. The teaching and writing I have no problem with, but then it was very emphatic, teach, preach, and write. So when I returned uh, from all my duties in Kansas City and went back to Denver uh, to talk to my father in ministry, Jesse Langston Boyd, he said, uh, and my then husband was, had just entered ministry, he said, maybe you're getting mixed up and you're answering Roger's call. And I said, no, Roger wasn't on the airplane. <laughs> it's not Roger's call. And then he said, well, I don't know what to do because I've never had a woman tell me that she's supposed to preach. Go away and pray about it. Mm. So for a year, I was told to go away and pray. Every time I showed up, he would say, go pray about it. So at the end of the year, I marked it on the calendar because I'm anal that way, right? And I said, Reverend Boyd, it didn't go away. And he said, I don't know how we're going to do this, but let's go ahead and work on it. And he said, then I need you to know that if we go through with this process, uh, people are going to think that you are answering Roger's call. People are going to think that you want to abandon motherhood. People are going to think that you are just want to sleep with, I'm trying to edit my language now, mm -hmm. speaking of rhetoric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people, people are going to think that you just want to sleep with preachers or people are going to think you're lesbian mm -hmm. and you want to do what men do. And I said, God didn't say any of that stuff to me. So we need to go forward with this. And it was bruising. It was absolutely bruising. And all the things that he said came to pass uh, from women and men in the church. And so I was the only one. In my ordination class, I was the only woman there. And then another woman came. So in the, at that time, in the 140 some year history of, of Shorter Amy Church, I was the first woman and the first woman to come into ministry in my particular uh, section of the country. So it was, it was God speaking to, I don't know why this is messing with me. <laughs> it was God speaking to me even above the noise of an airplane. Uh, and, and the voice never went away. And, and even though the church said that the call to, you had a call to preach, I understood that God put the other two things there. So when I'm in the board of examiners in the AME Church, African Methodist Episcopal Church, they said, so you're going to preach and pastor. I said, that's not what God told me to do. So as I say to my students now, there's a consequence for doing what God tells you to do and not what a board tells you to do. And so uh, that's been my call all the way along was to teach, preach and write. And God has been faithful because that's what I do is teach, preach and write now 35 years later.